Hello, welcome back to Math 332 Linear Algebra. Today we are going to continue our discussions on the concept of row space, column space, and null space of a matrix. And in particular, we are going to look at the, the dimensions of all these vector spaces and how it can provide us with insights into the solutions uh, of the system in the form of AX equal to B. So a quick review. Um, the uh, row space, column space, and the null space is always associated with a matrix. So if you look at all the row vectors, you take the linear combinations of all the row vectors uh, and put it in a set. That set is actually a vector space, and that's known as the row space of A. So if you take all the column vectors of the matrix and look at uh, all the linear combinations of all these vectors, again, it will form a vector space. That vector space is known as the column space of A. And for the null space of A, we are not looking at the concept of span, actually. We are just taking a collection of the vectors x that can make Ax equal to 0. So this, again, is a vector space, and uh, this is known as the null space of A. And one of the very critical uh, things about all these vector spaces is the, is the uh, it can provide us information right here, theorem 4.7.1. And theorem uh, 4.7.2, it can provide us information on whether or not uh, system of equation AX equals to B has a solution. And when it has a solution, whether or not we will have unique solutions or we will have infinitely many solutions. So this, we discussed this in detail uh, in uh, videos from before. So let me summarize the key facts and important information and uh, uh, that what theorem 4.7.1 is trying to say. Okay, so what it says is that if you look at the system of equations, and if you look for whether or not uh, this system has a solution, that will completely depend on whether the vectors B is in the column space of A or not. So if B is in the column space of A, we know that this system is consistent, that is, it has a solution. And if B is not an element in the column space of A, then this system of equations will not be consistent. That means that they will not have a solution. So existence of a solution depends on where is B. So if B is in the column space of A, the system will have a solution. And if B is not in the column space of A, the system will not have a solution. So column space of A provides us uh, this type of information. Okay, so the theorem 4.7.2 says that if the system already has a solution, the system already has a solution, then if the null space of A is trivial, the null space of A is trivial. So null space is a vector space. So the smallest possible vector space is the set containing the zero vector, and that's it. So this is called a trivial vector space. So if the null space is trivial, which means that it only consists the vector zero, then uh, the system Ax equal to B, if they have a solution, then the solution will be unique. Again, let me, let me remind you again, the existence of solutions cannot be provided. The information on the existence of solution cannot be provided by the null space. So the null space says that if you have already a solution for this, okay, if the null space is trivial, then the solution is unique. But provided if, we're, if we already know there's a solution. Okay, if the null space of A is non-trivial, so the null space of A is bigger. It contains non-zero vectors. It contains non-zero vectors. In particular, if you can find a basis of the null space consisting of vectors that are non-zero, then the solution is given by this. And all the C are constants. Any constants that you can think of, that's the reason why you have infinitely many solutions. So if the null space of A is non-trivial, uh, the system, if it has a solution, it will have infinitely many solutions. That's what theorem 4.7.2 tried to tell us. Okay, so so this is one of the very important information that we learned uh, from the previous video. So let me summarize. Ax equals to b. Okay, uh, if b is in the column space of A, then we have solutions. Okay, if b is not in the column space of A, we do not have a solution. The system is inconsistent. No solutions. All right, so null space. So Ax equals to b. Okay, if you look at the null space, the null space of A. The null space of A will not tell you whether or not the system has a solution. So let's assume that the system has a solution. If the null space of A is trivial, then the system, if they have a solution, the solution will be unique. Okay, right. If the null space of A is non-trivial, it actually has a basis. Uh, it actually has a basis. Let's say it has basis V1, V2, so on and so forth non-zero vectors, they have a basis. Then this system, if they have a solution, the solutions will not be unique. It will be 
you have you have infinitely many solutions. Okay, so this is what we talked about last time. Okay, we're gonna use it again today, and um, but today we are more gonna concentrate on the new concept. All this will be uh, uh we'll use it uh, at the end of the the, the video. But uh, now we are going to section four point eight. So section four point eight. Okay. So after we review all the concepts that we have before, now we are going to introduce some new concept. It's not very difficult concepts, pretty straightforward. So uh, we know row space is a vector space, column space is a vector space, noun space is a vector space, so vector space has basis. Okay, that's fine. So we also know the number of vectors, the number of vectors in this in those bases, if you count the number of vectors in the bases, that is by definition. Uh, the def the dimensions is called the dimensions of the vector space. So row space. If the row space has bases v1, v2, then we will say the dimensions of the row space of A is two because there are two vectors in the bases. All right. So this is the definition of dimensions. Now the dimension of the row space and the dimension of the column space, okay, is always the same. We'll talk about that later. It's going to be always the same. This is a fact, so we're going to show you why. But the dimension of the row space of the matrix A and the column space of the matrix A is always the same. And that same number, the dimensionality of these vector spaces, is known as the rank of A. So rank of A is the dimension of the row space of A and the column space of A. So two things here. Dimensions of the row space of A, you don't know why yet, but the dimension of the row space of A and the dimension of the column space of A, they are always the same. And they are all known as the rank of matrix A. This is just a name. Okay, the null space of a matrix A is a vector space. It has a basis. The number of vectors in that basis is called the dimensions of the null space and it has a name. New name for that dimensions is called nullity. So nullity, so nullity of A is the dimensions of the null space of A. Okay, so uh, let's look at why the dimension of the row space of A and the dimension of the column space of A is always the same. So let's look at this example right here. So recall from the previous video, we study, we actually study, okay, you have a matrix A, how do we find a basis for the row space of A? How do we find a basis for the column space of A? And how do we find a basis for the null space of A? We, we done that before in the previous video. Also, from the previous video, we know that the row space of A and the row space of the RREF of A, they are the same, okay? Also, the null space of A and the null space of the RREF of A is also the same. The only thing that is different is the column space of A. The column space of A is not the same as the column space of the RREF of A. So this is what we learned from the previous video. Now, okay, if you remember from the previous video, so this is A, Right, you row reduce it to the RREF of A, which is given here. Now, this row vectors, this row vectors, and this row vectors actually form a basis for the row space of RREF of A, which is also uh, the row space of A. So, if you look for if you look for the basis, okay. So, basis for the row space of A, right? These are the vectors. These are the vectors. Let's call it R one. Okay, R2, R3, so this are the vector, R1, R2, okay, R3. So the basis for the row space of A is this vector, R1, R2, R3. Okay, now, we also know from the previous video, uh, if you look at the RREF matrix, this, 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 do not form a basis for the column space of A, do not. But there are corresponding columns in A. This, 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 th that actually form the basis for the column space of A. So from previous video, we know that, okay, we know that the basis for the column space of A is actually given by, given by not these three vectors, not these three vectors, but the corresponding vectors here, here, and here. So let's call them column one, column two, and column three. So this is column one, column two, and column three. So these are the column vectors, okay? So these are the column vectors. Column one, column two, and column three form a basis for the column space of A. Not this three, okay? But this three. 
Okay, so you count one, two, three, one, two, three. So the dimensions of the column space of A is three, the dimension of the row space of A is three, and they are known as the rank. So the rank of A is three. Okay, so this is not a proof, this is just an example to show you how they are the same. And in fact, you can see that right here. So let me see that, let me say that one more time. If you look at the pivot, this pivot, right, it gives you one row vectors, the second pivot, give you second row vectors. The third pivot gives you the third row vectors that form a basis for the row space of A. Now, okay, same pivot. This pivot, okay, did not give you the, the this pivot did not give you the, uh, uh, the column vectors that will form a basis for column space of A, but this vectors basically are counting this vectors right here that will form a basis. This vectors will have a corresponding vectors from A that will form a basis for the column space of A and this vectors right here has a corresponding uh, column vectors that will form a basis for the column space of A. So we can still use this pivot to tell you how many vectors that is in the column space of A, that is in the basis of the column space of A. All right, right, let me say that again. This vector, if you count, this count, if you don't care about what are the vectors, this one vector, two vector, three vectors. There are three vectors in the basis of the row space of A. Okay, one vectors, two vectors, three vectors. You will know that there are going to be three vectors in the basis for the column space of A. So counting the one right here gives you the dimensions for both the spaces. We don't know the vectors. We know. I mean, if we, I don't care about what are those vectors, what are the column vectors and the row vectors in the base, if I don't care about that, if I don't care about what are the vectors that is in the row space, column space, I just want to know how many. So I'm counting one in the row space. I have one row vectors is in the basis of row space. It's two, three, okay? These are in the column space. One, two, three. So the pivot in the RREF matrix gives you information on the dimensions of the row space and the column space. Okay, pretty, pretty good. So now we know that it will always be the same. Row space and column space, they always have the same dimensions and those are known as rank, rank of a matrix. All right, now, how about the null space? So the null space, okay, meaning that we want to solve AX equal to zero. We want to find all the X. These are all the X that is in the null space of A. Right, so we know how to solve this first day of class. If you put in the uh, augmented matrix and try to solve for it, you will see that you have a system like that, free variable. This is x4 and x5, free variable. And if you write down all the answers, your answer will look like this. And we know from the previous video that this vector is right here and this vector right here will actually give you uh, the basis of the null space of A. So the null space of A will have this basis. So the basis of the null space of A is the vectors in front of the free variable. So the basis of the null space of A will consist of vectors that is the multiple, that is the uh, vectors right in front of the variable, the free variable x4 and x5. So the number of free variable, the number of free variable will give you the number of bases in the null space of A, right? So if you have two free variable, you will have two vectors right here that will form the basis for the null space of A. So if you look at this system, pivot, 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 give you the information on the rank of a matrix. Free variable, free variable will give you information on the nullity, the null space, the dimension of the null space, the nullity of uh, the matrix. So in fact, we can see from here. So in fact, we can see from here. Okay, the, let me write here. So in fact, we can see from here. Very important information. So we know rank of A, okay, is three. They are counting the pivot. Nullity, the nullity of A, we are counting the number of free variables. So this is two. So if you add these two together, it will always equals to five in this case. And this is the number of column. How many columns? One, two, three, four, five. See, if you count the rank, so you are counting the pivot, counting the free variable, you will exhaust all the possible, all, all the uh, column space. So the column, this first column, second column, third column, fourth column, fifth column, this gives you everything you need to know on the rank of the matrix and the nullity. And it always adds up to the number of columns. Does that make sense? Right? So this is a very important um, uh, 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 information that uh, 
In fact, it's, it's true in general. Uh, it's called the rank nullity formula. So the rank of A, of a matrix A, and the nullity of a matrix A always add up to the number of columns. Okay, why is that so? Because you just count, you look at this. Rank is counting here. Free variable give you the nullity. So rank plus nullity will equal to the number of columns. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, number of columns for a matrix. So this is true in general. So this is true in general. And again, let me remind you one more time. Okay, let me give you an analogy. So we learned long time ago um, that if you have a matrix A, let's say it's a big matrix, it's a matrix of size 1000 by 1000, they have a lot of information contained inside that matrix. But sometimes I don't want to know those information. I want to know, I don't want to know every information in that matrix. So I choose to, uh, uh, to reduce that matrix to a number. So the number is called, let's say it's called determinant of A. So determinant of A is a number, let's say it's equal to 5. So you don't see all the, all the small details on the entries of A anymore. You only get one number. That number tells you a lot of information too. That number, for example, in this case, tells you that this matrix is invertible, right? So same thing here, uh, the dimensionality is a number. So you look at here, so row space of A consists of all these basis vectors. Okay, this is a basis vector. But sometimes I don't care about specifically what are these vectors. I just want to know how many vectors in it. So you reduce it to a number. So rank of A is a number now. I don't, which, which has nothing to do with these vectors. I'm just counting the number of vectors. So it's three. Okay, column space actually have basis like this. Basis of the column space is actually consists of all these vectors. But sometimes I don't want to know these vectors. I just want to know how many vectors. So again, this is three. So this rank and nullity, which is the dimensionality of these vector spaces, summarize uh, these vector spaces and don't, don't even care about the entries, the elements in that. It just count the number of elements. So you, you just give me a number. I only want to know that number. And that number is called a nullity, right? Or the rank, which is the dimensionality. So dimensionality is like determinants. It, uh, it, it get rid of a lot of uh, detail information, but just summarize everything and give you a number. So think of it that way. All right, so why all these numbers will help us to solve problems? Uh, it will, because sometimes you do not really want to care about the, 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 the entries of a matrix A. You just want to know, hey, can I solve it just by looking at the rank and just by looking at the nullity? And this is what we want to do right now, okay? So before we do that, uh, this is a, a very quick information on the possible of the rank of A. So rank of A, okay, has to be, uh, always less than or equals to the minimum of these two numbers, the number of row and the number of columns. Okay, this is actually pretty straightforward to, to see that. I mean, there's a proof right here, but you can also take a matrix A. Let's say it's of size uh, two by three. So you have two row and three column and try to imagine that your row reduces this matrix to REF matrix. And uh, you can see uh, it maximum maximum number of pivot is one one right there this is the maximum number of pivot so the maximum number of pivot the number of pivot give you the rank right so in this case you see that the rank of a has to be less than or equal to two it can be less than two you can also just have like one pivot and another zero here right so in this case the rank is one that's possible or this matrix is actually the entire matrix zero so the rank is zero that's also a possibility but if you are doing the one you are counting the one this is like the maximum number of one that you can get this is like the maximum number of one that you can get uh, and some of the entries here, some of the entries here for a matrix of size two by three. So the rank of the matrix is always uh, has an upper bound and that bound is the minimum of the, the two numbers, okay? And the uh, rigorous proof is actually also very simple because the uh, row vectors in A is in Rn. So the column vectors in A is in Rm. So the rank is the dimensions of the uh, row space. So the row space, because all the row vectors is in Rn, so maximum dimensions of row space is n. Maximum dimension of the column space is m because the column vectors is in Rm. So the rank is the dimension of the row space and column space. So it has to be less than uh, this number and also this number, which means it has to be less than uh, m and n. Okay, so how, for example, how we use it. So you are given a matrix A. Okay, so this matrix is of size four by six. Okay, so immediately we know that the rank of A has to be less than or equal to four. Okay, it can be four, uh, it can be, it can be uh, less than four, so we don't really know yet at this moment, but 
even without row reductions, just knowing the rank is four, just knowing the rank is four, just knowing the rank of A is, sorry, it's not four, it's less than or equal to four, will, we'll, and, and again, look at the rank and nullity formulas. So length and nullity, in this case, has to add up to six, and this is maximum four. So even when you have maximum four, you need nullity two, okay, in order to make a six. So which means that the nullity is actually has to be minimum two, minimum two. So recall the theorems that we have before, just by knowing the null space, we now know that AX equals to zero has infinitely many solutions. It must have infinitely many solutions because the nullity is at least two, all right? This system always has the solutions. The trivial solution x equal to zero is, a, is the solutions. So the consistent part is straightforward. This system always has the solutions and, and the sol trivial solution is x equal to zero. And by the nullity, by just knowing the rank, okay, has to be maximum four and the nullity has to be minimum two, we immediately know that the system has infinitely many solutions without even row reducing it. So that's how we use the, uh, the rank and the nullity um, uh, pretty quickly in, in a very easy way. If, if we, even without a calculator, uh, without row reductions, we know uh, AX equal to zero for this A uh, always has a solution. In fact, infinitely many solutions. Now, slightly trickier is this question. So slightly trickier is this question. Suppose we are looking at AX equal to B now, okay? Right, AX equal to B. So knowing that the rank is maximum four, knowing that the rank is maximum four, the nullity is minimum two. Do we know this system always has a solution or not? So we are looking at existence of solution now. We're not quite sure whether we have a solution. So let me write this thing down. This is four by six. So this is six by one, and this is four by one, right? So the question now is, the question now is, this system for this matrix that has rank four, rank maximum four, not four, rank maximum four, and nullity minimum two. Do we always have a solution for whatever B that you give me? If you give me a vector B in, in R4, right? This vector B is in R4. You give me a vector B that is in R4. Do I always have a solution? All right, so this is uh, not so straightforward. And um, without reducing the matrix, without row, redu row reduce the matrix, we might not know, but but, so the question is, is it consistent for all the R4 vectors? Uh, the answer is, is maybe it could be. Uh, because, uh, let me show you why. Because, right, so B has to be in the column space of A to have solutions. To have solutions. This is what we know, to have solutions. Okay, B is in R4. B is a vector in R4. All right, so if the rank, if the rank of A is e precisely equal to four, that means that column space of A, okay, column space of A, look at column space, look at the column space. The column space is the linear combinations, consists of linear combination of column vectors. So the column space is actually subspace of R4, right? If you combine all the column vectors, you are in R4, these are R4 vectors. So the column space is a subspace so in this case, the column space, this column space is a subspace. It's a subspace of R4. If a subspace of R4, right? But if you know the dimensions of this column space is four, that means that it is the entire R4. Does that make sense? CA, column space of A, is a subspace of R4. But if you know the dimension is four, then it is the R4, right? It is the R4. So if the rank of A is four, that means that column space of A is the entire R4. So your B, which is a vector in R4, definitely is going to be in the column space because the column space of A is the entire R4. So if the rank of A is four, then AX equals to B will have solutions. Will have solutions for whatever B. For whatever B you give me. If the rank is four, we have solutions because the column space is the entire R4. And then because analogy is minimum two, the nullity is not zero. The nullity is minimum two. The null space is not just a trivial subspace. It has something else. So from the previous discussion, we know that we'll have infinitely many solutions. Okay, how about if the rank of A is not four, but it's three? Is AX equals to B always as a solution for all B, for all B in R4? Uh, the answer is no. 
right? Because the column space is a subspace of R4, but the dimension is 3. So this is not the entire R4 now. So some of the B will have solutions. Some of the B. Exactly which B? Well, the B that is in column space of A. So some of the B will have a solution, but not for all B. Same with the rank, if it is 2. Again, you are not the end, your, your column space of A is not the entire R4, right? So only the B that is in the column space that will make this system have solutions. Those B that is not in the column space, which is possible because your column space is not the entire R4. So your B that is not in the column space, which is possible. If you find those B, then the system, no solutions. There has no solutions. So you can see the rank and the nullity can give us so much information. And for this particular example, if you row reduce the matrix, you see that actually the, uh, the column space of A is actually has rank, right? Has dimensions, which is the rank, is dimension two. You see, because of this. So the rank of this matrix is actually two in this case. So if we know the rank of the matrix is, is, is actually two, then this system will not always have a solution for all B, some of the B, not all B, okay? All right, so this is how we use a rank and nullity to answer questions like that. Pretty powerful, actually, because um, we don't even need to row reduce. Just not even row reduce, we know all the possibility. We can give a theoretical uh, answers to all the questions that you can ask. AX equal to B has a solution or not? Well, it depends. How does it depend? It depends on the rank. If the rank is four, yes. For all B, it will work. If the rank of A is not four, then... Right, so we know. And we also know it doesn't really matter. Rank is four, three, two, or one. If they have solutions, we have infinitely many solutions. How do you know? Well, because of the nullity. Okay? So that's like the information that is critical. So uh, the rank and nullity uh, theorems can also help us answer questions like this, which uh, you might want to think about it. And maybe we can talk about it and in our virtual uh, classrooms. But just think about it. Okay. Now, um, okay, should I, okay, let's just do it very quickly. So the answer for this is no, okay? This answer for this is no. It's pretty straightforward because, again, answers can be always obtained by looking at the rank and the nullity. So rank plus, okay, oops. So we know that rank plus nullity in this case, all right, is 11. The number of column is 11. So the question is, for which rank, uh, is that a matrix of size 11 by 11, which the rank and the nullity is equals to A? The rank of A is equal to the nullity of A. So let's say the rank of A is equal to the nullity of A. Let's say the rank of A is X and equals to the nullity of X. So you have X plus X equal to 11. You have 2X equal to 11. So X is equal to 11 over 2. This is impossible because these are dimensions. Right, so dimensions cannot be fractions. It has to be integers, right? So you have to be a natural number actually, or zero. So you know this is not true. Okay, very simple. So here, okay, is there a 31 by 32 matrix which has a trivial null space? Uh, well, let's see. Okay, so trivial null space or non-trivial null space is about nullity, right? But we look at the rank. So rank of A actually has to be less than or equal to the minimum of 31 and 32, which obviously means that the rank of A has to be less than or equal to 31. So again, rank of A plus nullity of A, right, has to be equal to 32. So we know maximum, the rank of A is 31, maximum. Right, maximum. The rank of A is 31, so the nullity minimum has to be 1, right, in order to make 32. So the nullity is always has dimension 1 and above, which means that the null space of A is not just the zero vectors. Okay, it's not just a zero, zero vector. So it has non trivial subspace for sure. Okay, this matrix definitely has non trivial subspace. The subspace cannot be just like that, it has to be more. See, the rank and nullity give you a lot of information like that. And um, so, finally, some more facts. Um, so, do you see that why the rank of A and the rank of A transpose is the same? That's pretty easy to see because row space and column space have the same dimension. So, if you flip them, row space now become column space, column space now become row space. Who cares? They still have the same dimension. That's the explanation. And because of that, the rank and nullity theorems have this form where the rank of A plus the nullity of A transpose now will equal to the number of column uh, for the A transpose, which is M. Okay? Okay, so this is pretty easy. 
Um, this is not very difficult because you are just looking at A transpose. Apply the rank analogy for uh, rank analogy formulas for the A transpose. So you have this uh, plus analogy of A transpose has to be equal to the number of columns for A transpose or A transpose is now N by M. So this is M, but this A transpose rank and A is the same. So you have that. This is this is some of the problems that is pretty easy to work on. So this is like another fax. You can pretty much see why this is true. And finally, uh, let's look at uh, uh, questions for uh, 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 questions like this, for example. And again, this is kind of like a summary of what happened in the previous example. So you have AX equals to B, all right? And the rank, the rank is, uh, so let's write down the rank. So the rank of A plus the nullity of A in this case has to be equals to uh, the nullity of A. In this case has to be, this is size M by N, so it has to be equal to N. Okay, so the rank is M. So the rank is M and we'll be given that M is actually the smaller number. So it actually uh, is M right here. So, uh, so right here, this is M, right? So this is, rank is M. And again, uh, the, the question asks, does AX equals to B always has a solution? Uh, for this system of equations, and the answer is uh, no, because uh, the rank is M. Uh, oh, sorry, the rank is M, right? So the rank is M. So this AX equals to B right here. The column space of A is, the dimensions of the column space of A is M, and the column space of A is actually a subspace of RM, right? The column space of A. So if you look at, if you look at, okay, so a matrix of M row, okay, and N columns. So the, uh, the column space is in RM. So your column space is in RM and your dimension of the column space is M, right? So this system, okay, will always have a solutions because for whatever vector B that you have, your B is in RM and your column space is, is the entire RM. So this is kind of like the things that we, we talked about before. So in this case that the answer is yes. Okay. And uh, you can also see that uh, why we have this two theorem and uh, you can uh, apply the reasoning that we, we did for the previous two cases to see why this is true. So now, uh, let's be slightly more careful. You have AX equals to B. So again, this is M by N, right? Okay, let's write here. AX equals to B. This is M by N. This is N by one. This is M by one. Okay, right. So uh, M is bigger than N. So let's look at the rank. So the rank of A has to be less than or equals to the smaller number, which is N right which is n okay so okay again okay so n so the rank of a right is less than or equals to n uh but then m is bigger right so m is bigger so you actually your rank of a so let's look at the column space every time when they ask you whether we have solution or not we look at the column space of a so column space of a okay is actually a subspace of rm so this is actually a subspace of rm so subspace subspace of rm so this is a subspace of rm but the dimensions is less than m so your b your b your b your vector b which is in rm okay is not is does not have to be necessarily always in the column space of a because the column space of a this time is a subspace of rm with dimension less than m so the column space of a is not the entire rm so if it's not the entire RM, some of the B that is not in column space of A will be, will make this system inconsistent. That's the reason why it says that if M is greater than N, the system of equations here is inconsistent for at least one of the vectors B, right? Because your CA does not contain the entire RM. So some of the B are not in RM. So that's the reason why just by playing with the rank and nullity concept, you can get uh, information as general as this which is pretty cool. Okay, one more problem. So if your M is less than N, okay, then for every B in RM, the system either is consistent or has infinitely many solutions. Okay, so let's look at this again. So uh, the rank, okay, of the matrix A 
is less than or equal to the minimum numbers, the smallest number. So in this case, it's m. All right. So do we have a solution or not to ax equal to b? That will depend on the column space. And the column space is a subspace. This is a subspace. So this is a subspace of rm. Right. So this is subspace of rm. Now, if the rank, so if the rank, so if the rank of A is, in this case, it can be M. So if the rank of A is M, if, if the rank of A is M, then CA is actually the entire RM. It's actually the entire RM. So the system will always have a solution. Okay. But your rank of A can be less than M. So if your rank of A is strictly less than M, then your CA is no longer the entire RM. So some of the B that you get from RM might not be in the column space, so they might not be consistent. So you can see the system, they don't say that it's always consistent. So it says that it could be consistent. It could be consistent, it could be inconsistent, right? So it's, what it says is that if it's inconsistent, if they have no solution, done. We don't talk about anything. But if they have solution, if it have solutions, then the solution must be infinitely many. How do we know that? Right, so uh, whether or not something has infinitely many solutions, that is depending on the nullity. So let's look at the nullity. So rank, okay, plus nullity, rank plus nullity, okay, is equals to n, the number of column. Okay, so we know that uh, maximum, okay, maximum rank, maximum rank is m, okay. Right, the smallest number. The maximum rank is m. So let's say we have maximum m, and in that case we have a solution. And when we have a solution, okay. So let's say this is m. You look at the nullity. So the nullity of a is n minus the rank, right? And if we have rank m, if the rank is max is m, let's say we take the maximum number is m, then n minus m is strictly positive because your m is less than n so your n minus m is actually strictly positive so the nullity when you have a solution when you have a solution when you have maximum rank m when you have a solution the nullity is strictly positive which means that the null space is non-trivial and we have infinitely many solutions okay if the rank is not m but less than it which is a possibility which is which is a possibility then a x equal to v might not have a solution but when you have a solution the nullity is also, again, still strictly positive. So if you still have a solution, the solution will still be infinitely many. So you see that just analyzing the simple facts on the rank and nullity will give you general statements, general statements like this, which is pretty cool because we don't even know what matrix A is. We only know the dimensions of the row space and column space and the null space, and we can make general statements like that. And that is the end of this video and as you can expect you're going to find so many questions uh, especially multiple choice questions that test you on this concept of ax equal to b consistent inconsistent infinitely many solutions or no it's all unique all right that's the end of it thank you